Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 6 Repentance by Don Crow. Some people have a misunderstanding of what repentance is. Repentance is not perfection, but a change in direction. We are going to talk about the parable of the prodigal son, or the lost son. Jesus is telling a story that perfectly illustrates what it means for an individual to repent. In Luke 15, verses 11 to 12, Jesus said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. The youngest son wanted his inheritance before his father died, which is quite unusual, but his father granted the request and gave his sons their inheritance. Verse 13 says, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. The younger son took all of his wealth, his part of the inheritance, went into a distant country, and wasted it on riotous living. One translation says, partying and spending the money on prostitutes. Verses 14 to 15 read, But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. The land had become destitute and people were starving. And he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He got a job working for a man in that country and was sent to feed pigs. Verse 16 says, And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. He was so hungry at the point of starvation, and he said, Just give me the pig's food. Anything, but no one gave him anything. He had squandered all of his inheritance. Verse 17 continues, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? One translation says, When he came to his senses. In other words, his father's servants had more than enough food and he was dying from hunger. He made a decision. He repented. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of heart that causes a person to turn around and move in a new direction. In verses 18 and 19, he said, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Just make me a slave, Father. I've sinned against you, squandered your living, and sinned against God. Just make me a slave. Then he rose and went to his father. Repentance is more than just a change of attitude, a change of mind, and a change of heart. It leads a person to act on what they believe to turn around or return and go in a new direction. We have all turned away from God, our Father, and from heaven, our home. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 6 that all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned each one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The story continues in verses 20 to 24. 
and he arose and came to his father. One night I was telling this story to a man who had never heard it before, and he just knew that when the son returned, his father would say, Son, look what you've done. You've wasted all my wealth, all I accumulated in my life. Be one of my slaves. Most earthly fathers would probably be very angry and have an attitude like that. But notice the attitude of this father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Love came out of his heart for his son and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. They began to have a party. I once told this to a man who said, I see what Jesus is saying. If I'll just turn to the Heavenly Father for mercy and say, Father, I have sinned against you and I'm not worthy to be your son, he'll accept me. Our Heavenly Father will have compassion and he won't make you a slave. He will restore you to full sonship with him. God is waiting. Have you turned away? Why don't you turn to God your Father and to heaven your home today? Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. Question. Define repentance. Answer. Here are some acceptable answers. It is an about face to a new commitment. It is a change of mind. It is a change of heart that results in one turning to God from one's old ways to God's ways. A change of direction, not perfection. To make a decision that changes the total direction of one's life. Turning from old ways and totally committing to God and His ways. Turning to a person to God through Jesus Christ. We read together Luke 13 verses 1 to 5. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Question. What must one do in order not to perish? Answer. Repent. We read 2 Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Question. What 
is God's desire for all people? Answer, that all come to repentance. We read Luke 16 verses 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Question. In Luke 16 verse 28, Why did the rich man want someone to come back from the dead and speak to his brothers? Answer, so that they could avoid coming to this place of torment. Question, what must these brothers do in order to avoid this place of torment? Luke 16 verse 30. Answer, they must repent. We read Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Question. Although it doesn't specifically say, this verse is talking about repentance. What will happen to those who repent? Answer. Eyes will be opened. Turn from darkness to light. Turn from the power of Satan to God. Receive forgiveness of sins. Receive inheritance. We read Acts 26.20. 20. But declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. Question. In the last part of this verse, three things are stated that the Gentiles should do. What are these three things? Answer. Repent. Turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. We read Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. 
many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Question. What did Jesus say these people practiced instead of the will of God? Answer. Iniquity or lawlessness. Question. What does this show you about the importance of true repentance versus lip service towards God? Answer. Salvation is from the heart, not lip service. We read Isaiah 55 verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Question. What must the wicked do? Answer. Forsake their way. Question. What two things must the unrighteous do? Answer. Forsake their thoughts and return to the Lord. Question. What will God do for the person who does those things stated previously? Answer. Have mercy and pardon abundantly. We read Luke 15 verse 7. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Question. What is heaven's reaction to one sinner who repents? Answer. There is rejoicing in heaven. We read Acts 3 verse 19. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Question. If you repent and are converted, what will happen to your sins? Answer. My sins will be blotted out. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.